Earlier today, I started seeing articles and social media posts saying that Kubernetes was dropping Docker support. And immediately, it seems half the people who read those articles didn't get past the title because I see a lot of people saying, how can Kubernetes stop using Docker? That's what it's built on. Unfortunately, a headline has no way to convey the nuance of the situation. And a headline or even a short video like this probably won't do justice to the technical and political backstory leading up to today's news. But before anything else, I want to point out that Kubernetes will still run Docker images just like it always has. And that's because Kubernetes uses the Open Container Initiative standard, which Docker images are fully compatible with no matter how you build them or where they're hosted. So while Kubernetes might use some other way of running containers in a cluster, Docker images will continue to run just fine in Kubernetes clusters. The point of this change, though, is to help people realize you don't need to install Docker, which is a whole application stack, including tools for container image building, running images, and more, just to be able to run the containers that Kubernetes manages. Instead, you can, and soon you'll be forced to, install a more lightweight container runtime like Containerd or Cryo that are purpose-built for running containers. They don't do other things like build container images or have a fancy end-user CLI. I talk about this a bit in episode two of my Kubernetes 101 series, which I linked in the card above me. And the primary reason the Kubernetes maintainers want to drop that Docker support in clusters is to be able to stop maintaining their Docker shim that translates container operations between the normal OCI compliant method and the Docker backend. Under the surface though, I think this change has been a long time coming. In Kubernetes, and indeed the whole cloud native ecosystem, vendors are falling over each other in a land war trying to grab market share and mind share. Docker is eponymous with containers currently, just like with Kleenex being used instead of the term facial tissues, Xerox being the name of a copy machine and Google meaning to search the web, Docker basically means containers to many people. And I know there are many companies who would like to make sure that people know that there are many more tools under the container umbrella besides just Docker. Now, before you all go yelling at me in the comments, I acknowledge there are many good reasons to consider using tools other than Docker, like Builda for building container images, or Podman for running containers locally, and Cryo for running containers in Kubernetes. But I think it would be a disservice to the history of Kubernetes to not acknowledge the fact that Docker was the cause of the rise of the containers to the preeminent status they hold today. Before Docker came along, containers were kind of like a secret ops voodoo magic that were barely on the radar of C-suite discussions. After Docker though, containers, and soon after Kubernetes, became the currency of cloud native computing. So while I don't think Docker is going anywhere fast, I think this change does mark a small shift in that ongoing cloud native battle between many vendors to help ensure the idea of what containers are is not attached to any particular vendor, in this case, Docker. I hope this explanation clarified things for you, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please consider subscribing, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.